What's going on guys? I'm Big Gal aka Simply Gizmos and this is the highly anticipated and recently released Samsung Galaxy S4. Now this is the successor to the wildly popular Galaxy S3 and um, back in March when they announced this I put up a reactionary video. If you check the links below you can have a look at that video. I was a little bit critical but despite my criticisms I got on the Galaxy hype I made a pre-order on launch day. I went down to the Samsung Experience store in London's Westfield Shopping Centre in Stratford. I picked up the handset. They had a bit of a launch event. I had some champagne. I ate some canopies. I had a croissant. I even stagged myself one of these S View covers. Check out the video review of that coming shortly. And yeah, um, I was quite excited. So in this video, I'm going to be unboxing it, giving you a quick tour of the product, and I'll give you my initial reactions. So let's get in. Okay, so before I break the seal on this, I'm going to give the box its two seconds of fame because Samsung has been on this eco-friendly small footprint thing, so the box is normally quite small. And this year they've added to that. It's kind of like a wooden crate looking thing. And um, it is 100% recyclable and printed with soy ink. So yeah, well done for your whole eco-friendliness. But enough of that, let's get in. And here it is guys, Samsung's latest and greatest, the Galaxy S4, and this is the Black Mist version, it's also available in white, and this one has 16 gigs of capacity. Um, one thing I will say is, it doesn't have the heft that, say, the Xperia Z or the HTC One has, um, but admittedly this doesn't have a battery in it at the moment. Let me just pop that to the side, we'll have a look in the box and I will come back to that shortly. Okay, so inside the box we've got this little pamphlet. Um, looks like it has the handbook, warranty card, and a quick start guide. They're all in that recyclable paper. And this little band that was holding them together has got a QR code on the front, which I would imagine would lead to a link on the website for either the phone or a replacement accessory pack. I can't imagine why anyone would want one, but we'll keep that moving. Um, the quick, side, quick Start Guide is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, warranty card, again self-explanatory. The Handbook, however, actually gives you details of the new features on the phone. So, for example, uh, dual camera, drama shot, uh, shot and sound, so that's for taking pictures and adding sound to your pictures. Story album, um, I'd imagine it covers, there you go, air view, and several of the other functions that it has in there. You also have the two parts of the mains adapter. It's just there. And the mandatory USB cable, again with the QR code and part number on the front. Got a set of earbuds. These are slightly different from last year's ones. I'm not sure whether the camera's catching it properly, but these are a flat cable for anti-tangle other than that, they look pretty much identical. However, oh, no, if you have a look at the remote, you probably can't pick that up, but the remote is a slightly different design, but I would imagine it's pretty much the same as you get with the S3. Some tips, again, with the QR code on the front, so you can look up replacements. And last but not least, the 26 milliamp hour battery. Okay, welcome back guys. Off camera I've taken the liberty of removing the cellophane. I've also added the battery and signed in because that stuff's really boring on camera. So looking at the hardware itself, uh, starting at the top, you've got all your sensors located on the front of the screen for the gesture control, eye tracking, uh, light sensor, and you've also got the front facing camera. You've got the earpiece in Chrome above the Samsung logo. At the bottom, the home button, again with the chrome detail, and the chrome detail is carried all the way around the bezel. And to the left and right hand side of that you have capacitive buttons, the one on the left being for the menu, and the one on the right uh, being the back button. They do light up and you'll see them when the screen comes on. At the bottom, just there, oh, I'll show you here, you've got the microphone, you've got the micro USB slot for charging, for expansion, uh, adding game controllers, hard drives, that sort of thing. Um, on the back, You've got the speaker, 
flash and a 13 megapixel camera. To the right hand side of the device there's a power button just there. Up the top the IR blaster for controlling your home entertainment system, TV, hi-fi, pretty much whatever, it's all programmable. You've got a three and a half mil headphone socket and on the left hand side the rocker button. On the front of that panel there is that beautiful full HD 5 inch 1080p super AMOLED screen and it is absolutely delightful. I mean there have been a lot of devices this year with 1080p screens. You've got the Xperia Z, you've got the HTC One, Oppo Find 5, but you know the whole AMOLED thing really really does elevate the bar somewhat. It is a really beautiful detailed panelled I really really do like the HTC One, it's got a lovely, absolutely beautiful screen, but the warmth and the level of contrast that this gives, I'm liking it. Mm -hmm. What's going on guys? Okay, so typical fashion, I signed into my social accounts, I had a quick little play of it, and in all honesty I was way way critical of this device before it got launched. And to be completely honest, I think I'm pleasantly surprised. The screen is absolutely amazing. Um, there is no knocking that. And if you are a fan of the Galaxy series of devices, I think you will like this. The screen is great, the camera is great, it still retains the expandable storage, you can still change the battery and carry a spare, so all those things remain. My one major criticism is it is way expensive. The offline price of this handset is £600. That is some £100 plus over the cost of its competition which are namely the HTC One and the Sony Xperia Z and both of these devices in my opinion have got way better build quality than the £600 plastic but Samsung has some caveats of their own the execution of their software is unbelievable the innovation they bring forward in the gesture control the eye tracking and even the porting of some of the top features from their point and shoot cameras and place them into the phone are definitely to be respected if you want to see a full review of this handset please subscribe down below i will be putting a review out shortly i will also be doing a head-to-head -head shootout between these two phones which i'm sure many of you want to see um, if you like this video you found it useful please give me some feedback hit the like button add a comment if there's anything you'd like to see let me know as always people you can find me here on youtube i'm on blogger i'm on twitter and if all else fails or you want to know more about me google me baby